Hello, my Afro students. This is Miss Sandy. I'm excited to bring you our virtual class for May 7th. Um, I lost track of how many weeks this has been that we've been in a virtual environment, but, um, but I think it's been going well. I'm excited. I actually, before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out um, to Claire and her mom. So Claire, one of, my, my, one of my students, has been working really hard on a couple of things uh, from home. And her mom was kind enough to send me some videos of her accomplishments, and they are truly remarkable. So Claire, congratulations on a couple of new skills that you're able to work on, and, uh, and great job. And also for the rest of you, keep those videos coming. I loved seeing them. Um, Claire's mom posted them on the Facebook events page for these virtual classes. So, um, so that way even um, all of uh, her peers can see it too. So, so please, please do that. That would be great. Um, and also don't forget to um, like this post on the Facebook page. Let me know that you've seen it. It's the way I'm taking attendance at the moment um, until the things uh, go back to normal and change a little bit. Okay, so actually we're gonna do a very different approach today. Um, this video is actually gonna be pretty sh uh, much shorter because it's not a lot of demonstrating. Um, I wanna actually give you a list of things to do, but I'm gonna walk through them and talk to them. And the, the reason is I, the weather has turned, which I am very excited about it. About I, I know that there's still a couple of, you know, it's a little chilly and a, and a couple of cool evenings, but we've been blessed recently with some really nice weather and I want us to take advantage of it. So um, we're gonna get back at it. That's what my theme is for this week, is getting back at it. Um, so we've been focusing primarily on a lot of conditioning and stretching. We're still going to do a little bit of that, but we're going to get back at some basic skills that I know you can do and practice safely from home. Um, and if there are some things you can't do, I'm going to give some alternatives, but we're going to really hit some skills that we uh, typically do in class. Um, the ones that you can do safely, of course. So some things to remember, I have some notes here. Um, now. The idea here is that a lot of these things I'm going to recommend that you do outside. That This is like an outdoor workout, but it can be done inside as well. If you do it outside in your grass, if you have a safe place to do it, um, you may want to consider wearing sneakers, okay? Just keep that in mind. Still dress appropriately. Um, keep, uh, you know, be mindful of your surroundings and things, things like that, similar to inside. And all that applies for inside as well, um, minus the shoes if you don't want to wear them. Um, so anyway, this can be done inside or outside. On a nice day, please get outside, right? Um, if you have a safe place to go. So with that, um, I'm gonna go through this, the list of things I want us to accomplish this week. We can do this in two different ways, or you can do this in two different ways. I'm gonna show you what they are in total, like I have been, just a, so you can take even a screenshot, if you would like, of the board I'm gonna show you. Or you can write them all down and then go do them, or, after I explain each one in detail, you can pause the video, do them, and then revisit the video for the next, um, next drill or skill I want you to do. So either, um, either way works. So you can either take note of what, of what all the things are and go do them, or you can do them one at a time and just pausing the video. It's completely up to you. Um, but um, this is more of a skill checkup too. That's what I wanna consider it. So let's check in on those skills and dust some things off that we haven't done in a while. And, um, and see where that takes us and see how we do, okay? So with that, I'm gonna slide a little bit here and go over our board for the week. So I'm sorry, I know there's a little bit of a glare from the screen of the, of the laptop here. So first, we're gonna go through some, we're gonna stretch. Um, I'm gonna go through this quickly, so I'm gonna go into detail on each one. We're gonna do some split walks, we're gonna do some inside outs, and those are two more stretchy components, more flexibility components that I wanna work on. Um, then we're gonna hit some basic skills just to dust them off, okay? Hands and bridges, candlesticks through the limbers, okay? And uh, back walk overs, and then I have a conditioning sequence I wanna do. You're gonna really kind of pay attention to the, to the details of that one so you understand what it is. Um, Cause there's a lot of words here and numbers. Um, if you zoom in, um, you may not understand them unless you understand uh, or listen to my talk track. Um, round offs, um, a stretch and then I have a challenge again, just like I typically do. So this is what we're gonna focus on today, all right? So with that, and again, I don't have, there's not a lot of demonstrating here. I have a couple of things I'm gonna show you a video on my phone so you can get an idea of what I mean. But for the most part, you know what these things are, okay? So I'll just keep this here for my own sake. Okay, stretching. This one, you guys know the drill, okay? We've done a lot of very interesting different stretches over the virtual, in our virtual environment um, to be creative. 
um, do some basics, okay? You don't have to get fancy. Um, I want you to stretch your splits, your straddles, your backs. We're gonna do some bendy things. Please stretch your backs. Okay, so take a good five, maybe even 10 minutes and stretch really well. Shoulders, okay? Get those ankles and your wrists rotating, okay? Get, um, so do some good stretches before you move on to this. So if you wanna pause the video and do that, go ahead. Um, if, if you're just taking note, um, just keep, keep an ear out, okay? The next thing is, Every week while we're in our physical location class together, we've been doing a lot of split walks because I actually think there's, and I know I've shared this, lots of value to getting our splits and not all of you have your splits, okay? So this is a hint, please work on them, okay? Um, so split walks, right? All of you know what they are, you've done them, you can do them inside. Be careful if you do them outside just because you don't want to hurt your legs, okay? But, um, but either or, but do those, actually, if you do split walks with shoes on outside, it'd be a, more, a little more difficult because your feet aren't gonna slide as well. But, um, but, but give those a try. I have here 10 steps, 10 walking steps. That would be five on each leg. Um, but if you have a room in your house you're doing them in, go back and forth, okay? But I want you to do some split walks, okay? So if you wanna pause the video and go do that, go for it. If not, continue listening and taking note of what, what you uh, need to do for this week. The next thing, inside outs. All of you should know what inside outs are. I'll briefly, briefly explain them. Um, I went for a run today, so my legs are tired of holding them up. Um, so inside outs, you're going to push up into your bridge. No need to even do the back bend, right? Push up into your bridge, lift um, your right arm and left arm up, and flip over so you're facing the floor, but all four is on the floor, kind of like a bear, right? And then take your opposite arms and rotate them around back into your bridge. I think sometimes we call them in and outs. I, I grew up calling them inside outs, same concept, but you're going from bridge over to your front, back over to your bridge. You can go and walk down a room like that, and walk through a room like that. What I want you to do though, is do 10 in one direction and 10 in the other direction. It is important to go both directions, okay? Um, so actually we're gonna get a quick cameo from my boys who just finished their workout, it looks like. Oh, maybe not. I hear them coming. Um, so inside outs. So um, if you're gonna pause the video, if you're taking that approach, please pause it now, go and do your inside outs. Um, and then um, come back and we'll keep going. Okay, and there they are. <laughs> okay, they're noisy, so I'm hold holding for a second. Okay. The fourth thing I want you to do today, or this week, okay, is handstand bridges. And it sounds so simplistic, but honestly, unless you've been doing them on your own, I have not given those to you to, to do <laughs> to, in this virtual environment, okay? Please be mindful of your surroundings if you're doing them inside and of slippery feet on the floor, okay? Um, and if you're doing them, this is a, you can do this outside. This is, not a, this is not something you couldn't do, okay? So handstand to bridge. Um, and stand up, right? Make sure you do the whole thing, complete it. A couple things to think about. First of all, show your handstand, okay? Don't rush through it. Show the handstand with straight legs, then arch it over into the bridge and stand up, right, with your arms next to your ears. For those of you who can, who that, who, who um, feel pretty good with that, even though we haven't done it in a while, um, try to land your bridge with your legs together and stand up. That is incredibly challenging, and please give that a try. Okay, um, um, quick hint for those of you that may struggle, the closer your feet land to your hands, the easier it is. If you try and stand up from your bridge on your tippy toes, you will fall on your knees. Or with your feet pointed out, um, and a lot of dancers do that typically, you may fall on your knees as well. You want your heels close to the floor, they can be all raised, but your feet facing um, and pointed in front of you. Okay, so a couple of reminders about the handstand bridges. Okay, so pause the video. And then I want you to um, do those, um, or take note of everything, and then come back. Okay. Now, the fifth thing might be something a little bit different, okay? I'm gonna give you two versions, okay? So it's a candlestick through to a limber. Um, and I saw this really cool, let me, um, video, let me try and pull it up, but really, you all know what a candlestick is because we've done that um, in class. Or actually, it, I think, the first or second virtual class I did had the candlestick um, 
through to, let me see, through to a, uh, um, just a candlestick actually into standing up. Is this, is it, I think? Let me just double check. Yes, so let me. All right, so I'm gonna have to go through that again. So what you're going to do, and I have a video I'll show you for, um, in a moment. You're going to, everybody knows what a candlestick is, right? And really quick, okay? I'm gonna have to raise this a little bit. Okay, right? Your arms are up. You're gonna sit back, toes up, okay, and up. So that's a reminder of what the candlestick is. Through to a limber, okay? All of you know a front limber is a handstand bridge, but piking up from two feet, okay? So we're gonna put those two together. So as soon as you come out of the candlestick, you're going to stand up, put your hands on the floor, and pike up into that front limber. I'll show you the beginning of it. This video is only the first half of that, but doesn't show the limber. But let me. Pull it up. Okay. So shoot candlesticks, hands down, and then I'm asking you to limber over. She doesn't limber over. She actually goes into a much, much more complicated set of skills that maybe we can attempt another day. Okay? Um, and that was Chelsea Memo, actually. She's an um, Olympic gymnast. So she has her own page website if you actually wanted to check it out. But uh, so candlestick and then push up into your handstand out of it, and bridge over and stand up. Now, for those of you who have trouble getting to your handstand from two feet, I know there's a few of you, okay? That's okay. As soon as you stand up from your candlestick, take a step, and then do a handstand bridge. Maybe try that a couple of times, but do attempt to do the limber, okay? I know it's hard, right? But we're only gonna get better if we try, okay? So that's, uh, that's what I want you to work on. I have, um, I have here, I'd like you to do that 10 times, okay? Um, if you want to do it more, that's great. If you want to actually, if you're really, if um, limbers are easy for you, if you want to throw in some variables in there, I know some of you could do a handstand pirouette between, um, af uh, after the candlestick before you limber over, go for it, okay? Um, but I want you to get this basic motion back, okay? So pause the video and go give that a whirl, um, or take note and then we'll keep on going, okay? All right, the sixth thing I want you to do today is back walkovers. Now, hmm, what are my notes here? Okay, now, if you already can do your back walkover pretty easily, 10 back walkovers. I want you to work on your straight legs and your pointed toes, okay? And uh, really focus on that. If you wanna add some variation, only if you ha can do your back walkover with straight legs and pointed toes successfully, add some, you can uh, switch your legs, okay, as a variation. Or for even the more advanced, you can bring your legs together in the handstand, do a pirouette before you step down. Those of you who um, should be trying that will understand what I'm talking about, okay? If you're not quite sure what that is, not something to worry about, okay? Um, the other thing is, um, you know, I mentioned switching your legs or the pirouette. The other variation too that we typically do in class that I want you to try is your leg up right, to start, and an arabesque out. Again, only if you're comfortable because um, cause that is a little more challenging and you are doing this in a home environment um, and not in class with me. So um, back walkovers. Now, um, and this, that's safe to do outside, okay, as is the everything so far, pretty much, except for the split walks. But um, for those of you who cannot quite do back walkovers yet or you're struggling because we haven't been doing it for a while and you can't quite get over, um, I would rather you go down to a back bend and practice just kicking over, not the actual full back walk over, okay? That's what I would like you to try. If you struggle with that as well, because um, I don't want anyone getting injured, okay? I think last week, one of the variations I gave you um, to kicking over for a drill that we were doing was um, um, hanging off of your bed and kicking over from your bed, right? Because your bed is soft if you don't make it over, if you land on it, and, um, and the floor, you know, hopefully have some, like a, a safe, safe floor to do that onto you. Okay, again, parent approval only. Okay, don't get me in trouble. All right, so that's what I want you to do for back walkovers, I think, but really focus on the form, right? This is not something we've been doing a lot of. I want you to get back into it and focus on that form, okay? So give um, at, at least 10 of those a, a whirl. Um, one other thing, for those of you who are, are having trouble kicking out or kicking over, um, if you are trying this outside, um, 
there is a way you can actually get some help as well instead of using your bed. So at, at the studio, we typically will use the wedge. You, put, you lay down on the wedge, you push up into a bridge, and then you kick over, right? With your feet up the hill. And we never do a back bend down the wedge. It's dangerous for your wrists, okay? So you push up from the, from the ground, right? And then kick over because it gives you a little bit of elevation, which is what your bed would do also. If you are in the outside environment and are doing this in the grass, if you happen to have a hill, this is, I used to do this all the time in my parents' front yard. I would push up into a bridge with my feet up the hill, never do a back bend down the hill. Feet up the hill, push up into a bridge and kick over. It is exactly like doing it on the wedge. It simulates that, in, that the de decline that helps you kick over, okay? Again, um, just make sure you're in a safe environment and you're being very careful, okay? So back walkovers. And if for, if for some reason you do not feel safe, don't do it, right? I don't, there's, no, there's no reason to, um, to get injured. We will, we will get these skills back if you, um, when we get back into, into the studio, okay? All right, so if you wanna pause and go do that, um, or take note, and then we will move on, okay? The seventh thing I want you to do is our conditioning sequence. This is gonna sound confusing. I do have a video, okay? But what it's gonna be, we're, we're um, cause all of this has been skill based. This is actually going to be a little strength based, right? Hence the conditioning word I'm using. Okay. What you're going to do, and this is, this is the confusing part. I want to make sure, um, um, you understand you're going to do a push up, um, step one foot in, kick over, land in a bridge, bridge push up. Okay. Kick back over, but land in your plank, ready to do another push up. When I say plank, not on your elbows, on your hands, okay? But ready to do the next push-up. So you're kind of going back and forth, okay? So it's push-up, kick over to bridge, bridge push-up, kick over to a plank. Now, it's the numbering and how many I want you to do that might get a little confusing. And I alluded to this last week that we were going to use an up and down method for, for counting. So the first time you do it, I want you to do two push-ups, kick over, two bridge push-ups, and kick back, okay? The second time you do it, I want you to do four push-ups, kick over, four bridge push-ups, kick back to your plank. And then six, eight, 10. So you're doing evens till you get to the number 10. But then I want you to come back down to two, okay? So then you're, so you're gonna go two, four, six, eight, 10, eight, six, four, two. I almost couldn't do that backwards without looking. <laughs> Don't make fun of me, okay? So I hope that that makes sense. If the numbering or counting doesn't, come up with your own numbering and counting sequence, that's completely fine, okay? Even if you just do a same, the same number each time and just do a certain number of reps, that's fine. I was trying to change it up a little bit, right? So um, just do evens up to 10 and back down to two, okay? Now I'm gonna show you a video of what this looks like, just to give you a little bit more insight. I texted it to myself. I text myself a lot of stuff, which is ridiculous, but okay. So now this is a, this person's doing it more than I just told the number I told you to start with. And it's also in a big, large group environment. Push ups. She just did four there, I think. Kick over, bridge, bridge push up. Okay. So she was, she just did four there. Back right to the push up position. Okay. And then. No, she does it again. She did three. So they're doing the same concept. They're doing every number. I just said evens. And then back down. Okay, then she's probably doing two. Okay, kick back over. Bridge, push up two. And then she's gonna be very excited when she gets through her last set. It is very rewarding when you get to the last one and you're like, I, I did it. Okay, so that is the goal for that sequence. It's some conditioning as well, of a little acro, because you're kicking back over, back and forth. Now, if you cannot kick back and forth for whatever reason, either not safe or your ability-wise is not happening, um, we can be creative with it, right? You can do the push-ups and the bridge push-ups separately by pushing up into your bridge without the kicking back and forth, okay? So just be, you can be creative with that um, and do um, in any way that you can, okay? All right, so I would like you to pause the video, go do the conditioning sequence, and then come back, um, or just take, 
lots of notes and uh, go do it all at the same time. Oh, and also that can be done outside pretty, very, very easily, okay? Um, in a grassy area, of course. All right, the eighth thing that I want you to do is round offs. Now, this again is making sure you have a safe environment to do these. My recommendation is only do these outside, okay? Um, however, if you do not have a safe environment, they can be done inside because uh, as long as your parents okay it, don't give me trouble. Um, but I don't want you to run. I want you to do a power hurdle. We've talked about this quite a bit in class. What is a power hurdle? Okay, we probably don't talk about it enough, actually. A lot of you like to run to another country before you do a tumbling pass. We've talked about this. You actually end up running out of room and then you have to tailor your run afterwards to try and fit more skills, okay? A lot of you are under the misconception that your power in your round off and the subsequent skills comes from a very long, strong run, okay? Not 100% untrue, but really your power is coming from your hurdle, okay? So a really good hurdle is actually going to help your tumbling. So on this, for this drill, we're focusing on the hurdle and the round off. I'm going to show you a video of a power hurdle into a round off. Um, it wasn't the most perfect video um, of someone doing it. I, I really think she could have had a little bit more power behind it, but it was the closest one I found that I, that I liked and wanted to share, share with you. But before I move on, I'll share, let me see. That's what I put, power hurdle. So a lot of you run, right? And you hurdle, and then you do your round off. So the power hurdle is there's no run, none, okay? You're gonna stand with your feet together, right? You're going to, this is your motion to start. You're gonna push and you're gonna explode. Do your round off, okay? So it's more of an explosion, right? It's a go, okay? Probably not the greatest demonstration on my part, but um, I think you're getting the point. I want you to work on getting that powerful, strong hurdle, which is gonna really help your round offs. So I'm gonna show you a video of someone who does the round off after it. Um, I did not do a round off to show you. So here it is. Let me pull this up. It's gonna take a second. I think it's 28 seconds into the video of minutes and advertisement. So hold please. Let's skip ads. Where is she? Okay. I think it's 28 seconds in. Okay. Oh, why can't we see that? Oh, that's not coming through very well, is it? Why is there such a glare? There's a glare when I look at it. I don't know if you guys can actually see it. Uh-oh. Let me try this again. Why did the other video show up so nicely? Yeah, okay, you know what? I can probably show you in my text Let's try it one more time. Hmm. This did not happen before. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It's better than I remembered it. Oh. Why? Why is it doing that? Well, guys, I'm going to see if you can. I'm going to leave it like this and see if you can see it. Just maybe the recording, my screen is not. See, it starts to show up. Okay, well, I'm not sure if you can see that. You know what, I will put a link into, I'll see if I can put a link into the Facebook page. Um, it's about 28 seconds in, it's a very long video. I don't want you to watch the whole thing. Plus, I don't actually know what she's saying, if it's any, of any value or, <laughs> or what I want you to be hearing from a coaching perspective. But I did like her power hurdle into a round off. So I will put that in there. But I think you get the idea. So um, I showed you that um, power hurdle, right? And then I want you to add the round off rebound at the end. A couple of things about your round offs that I want you to keep in mind, okay? Um, I want you to make sure that you're working on your hand placement. We've talked about this in class actually quite a bit this year. Remember, your hands are not like a cartwheel. This is not, that's not the same thing. They're turned in farther than a cartwheel and it's almost like a Hershey kiss. Remember these Hershey kiss pushes we did? But just a little bit wider, okay? No thumb sticking out. 
okay? So your hands turn a little bit farther and it's Hershey Kiss positioning almost, okay? Hand placement is something I want you to think about. I also want you to think about getting those hands off the floor with your head as you rebound, okay? I don't want your feet landing and then you lifting your chest. I want your chest and your arms in the air, really tall before your feet land, right? There should be a little bit of air time in there, okay? And then a nice, strong, powerful rebound, okay? This, I recommend you doing outside and I recommend you doing it with sneakers on. Just for your feet, because I don't, I, I get, sometimes there's twigs and who knows, I'm just be, I want to be mindful of your feet and you don't get hurt. Um, of course, if you're used to being outside without your shoes on, feel free, but um, I'm okay with shoes on this one, just as an FYI. So power hurdle into that round off, okay? No need to work on the run, okay? Actually, I'm trying to reduce your runs a bit. That's the goal. Think about that, okay? Um, I want you to do it a minimum of 10 times. 10 good ones. Don't do them 10 in a row all sloppy, right? 10 good, strong power hurdle round off, okay? All right, so pause the video, go do those, um, or continue taking notes and then come back and we will keep going. Okay, the ninth thing is always, I, if you haven't figured this out, I do kind of the same cadence, right? Um, the ninth thing we always do is almost like a little bit of a cool down. I, went, I don't have anything specific here on purpose because if you've done round offs in your ankles and your wrists just aren't, like, aren't used to it, roll those out, right? stretch out those, we already did a lot of split walks and stretching. Stretch out your backs because we did um, those inside outs and the walkovers and the um, handstand bridges. We did a lot of back activity today. So do some cat stretches and some seal stretches just to really get that moot back kind of really stretched out and feeling a little, uh, a little better. Um, so do some stretching, right, to cool down. Um, do, I wanna say like a good five minutes of stretching. I know you guys don't like to do it and you rush through it and we don't spend a lot of time on it, um, but take the time to do it, okay? Um, so pause the video and go do that and then come back. Okay. The last thing I want you to do is the challenge activity. I always have a challenge activity. Now, some of you love this, some of you hate it, I'm gonna be honest. However, we have not done it yet in our virtual environment. If you're doing it on your own, that's great. This is something you can do on your own safely at home. Um, walk on your hands, okay? What I want you to try and do, and this doesn't have to be all done in the same day, right? Over the course of the next week until our next virtual class, I want you to practice walking on your hands. And the goal is not to walk 50 feet or across a whole room, okay? The goal is to beat your personal best, and that's what I want you to do. So um, similar to doing the, I, I talked about doing that plank challenge. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, if you're doing that, do your plank and then walk on your hands, right? It's something you can practice um, every day and try to beat your personal best. A lot of you in class always tell me you're, you, you've done eight steps, right? You're only trying to get to nine. You don't want to go from eight to 20, right? You want to go from eight to nine, right? Um, so I want you to work on, on um, walking on your hands. For those of you that can walk on your hands very proficiently, um, there's a couple of variations to consider. And the, the one that we've done in class is walk, walk five steps, pirouette, full pirouette, then continue. Walk five steps, full pirouette, okay? You can try that one. A trickier one that I wanted to kind of throw at you that we haven't done in class, but again, safe to do at home, is walk on your hands like you normally do. Five steps, half pirouette. Walk backwards, five steps. Half pirouette, walk forward, five steps backwards. It is actually incredibly difficult. Even though it's only a half pirouette, which some of you are fine, like fine with, the, just the act, activity of shifting from walking forward to backward and actually walking backwards a lot more difficult, uh, not something we actually work on all that much. So, um, so give that a try. You can also try walking in various positions. Just, you don't wanna have like just crazy legs because that's really not actually beneficial. Something with um, good, um, Good technique, straight legs, pointed toes, um, but good form, okay? So, so uh, not like just crazy legs, but I want you to try different, different positions is fine too. But I want you to try and beat your personal best, right? So from here on out, every week, uh, and when I say here on out, it could be forever. It could be into next, our next season starting in September. Every week, try and walk on your hands, okay? And just do it only with the goal of meeting, de or beating your personal best or maybe trying to beat a personal best in a certain position, right? You may not be able to walk as far in a straddle, as an example, okay? So I want you to try that. With that said, I also just wanna mention, um, so that actually, 
that can, those are the 10 things I want you to do um, this week, okay? Um, and as I've stated in the past, that all doesn't have to be done same, the same day, especially because I want you to do a lot of that outside because um, of the, the space it takes um, and the padding of the actual, the natural soil in the grass. Um, if the weather's not good, you can wait. I think it's supposed to be nice over the weekend. Um, uh, but I think it's supposed to be nice um, in the next coming couple days. And also, you don't have to be in a tank top and shorts. You can be in like um, tighter, long pants, right? Um, and a, like a, a, a long sleeve um, uh, attire as well to keep yourself warm if you do go outside, if it is chilly, okay? The other thing about being chilly outside, if you do go out when it's chilly, that makes, makes stretching even more important because you don't want to tumble with your with cold muscles, okay? So please make sure you, that that's why stretching is really, really, really important. Or go for a quick jog down your, down your lawn and back, back and forth a couple times just to keep, get your muscles moving, okay? So that's something really important as well. Um, with that, I'll wrap up. The only thing I did want to follow up on is I, I have been keeping you posted on my own plank challenge I've been doing every day. I have gotten a bad habit of taking off on the weekends, but I think it's okay because I'm, I'm getting high in um, the amount of time, so thinking, I think I do need the rest on the weekends. But um, at this morning, I did four minutes and 20 seconds. Um, I hope you guys are still continuing to try and challenge yourself to do a plank every day and increasing your time. I'm at the point where I'm only increasing five seconds a day because um, it's gotten a little difficult and, um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling a bit, but, but I know I feel, I feel better. And actually the first, now, now I'm getting to the point where like the first two and a half, three minutes is, is nothing. Whereas that was so difficult, um, you know, a couple weeks ago. So, um, so I know that it is like, I am getting better at it. So please continue to do that. Um, yeah. And also, uh, one last thing is please review our previous videos. If you haven't, definitely look at them. If you have, look at them again if you want, or even just take note of the skills you liked and repeat them, right? I, this, this is not designed to be a once and done deal. It's why these are recorded. I want you to actually go back and revisit them and do them um, periodically um, throughout the week or pieces of them. The other thing is like, even after, even if it's into the summer, like I would love for you guys to continue to work out and do, do a lot of these things, okay? So with that, I'll wrap up. Um, again, Miss Heather sends her, um, her her hello. She misses everybody. She um, she gave me a couple of these ideas, quite a few of these ideas. She's been really helpful. She sends me videos. Oh, the one thing I want to share with you is Miss um, Heather. She didn't send, put it on our Facebook page. Maybe I'll challenge her to do that. But she sent me videos of her practicing her round effect handspring in the backyard. Um, and they look great. She hadn't done them in a while, and she texted me the next day telling me how sore she was. Um, but she felt great just getting back in action. Um, so she sent me a few, a couple videos of herself doing doing some back handsprings, and was um, really excited to to, uh, to get moving and active again. Right now that the weather's nicer and we can get outside. Um, so again, miss everybody. I hope to see you guys soon. Um, and please send those send videos and post them to the page so that we can check check them out and um, stay in contact. Um, with that, I'll say goodbye. All right, see you guys.